Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 19th, 2021. So doggone it, yesterday was just kind of a crummy day, wasn't it? We we had a little bit of volatility first thing in the morning, and then we just kind of died on the vine. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at a 15-minute chart, the majority of the day was locked in a very, very tight consolidation. And then at the last of the day, bang, um, some bears come in all of a sudden. And um, we see some pressure and pain on the market for this morning. So what does that mean for today? And how are we going to approach the market for the day? Well, how about we grab ourselves something to drink? Let's settle into our office chairs and let's get ready for the hump day edition of the morning market prep video. Well, good morning once again, everyone. I hope you all had a great afternoon, great evening yesterday. We may have some challenges to face this morning. Let's take a look at these charts. I wrote in the morning blog that there are some worrisome cracks starting to show in the market. And I know this is not a conversation that anybody wants to hear. No one wants to hear about problems in the market. We have been in a historic rally to the upside. This has been the longest bull run in market history, and no one wants to hear someone talk about what if it's over. Well, I think it's time we start fessing up to that fact and look at the charts for what they are telling us. Let's take a look here at the Dow. Now, first off, we have been holding on and we've been clinging to a trend here and that trend is still in place. So I don't want to give you the impression that we are ready to just, um, you know, collapse or anything like that. I'm not trying to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, market tops are a process and, and usually kind of a choppy, uncomfortable process um, when they occur. Let's notice that we're holding on to this trend. We're clinging on to this trend, but there is some worrisome things here starting to show. First off, notice that we have now officially put in a lower high here on the Dow, and we are falling below that little price support in the chart right there. So a little bit of a concern here in the Dow. Now we could certainly find support right off of these lows that we had last week. We could find that support, but it has to be a little bit uncomfortable in the, the knowledge that we have a lower high showing and we are in striking distance of a potential lower low. Now it is entirely possible that we could find that low down here and bounce right off of it, put in a little double bottom and then go right on back up for a while. But there are starting, we are starting to see some problems here in this market. We need to acknowledge that and we need to be planning carefully around our trading. You know, for a long, long time, anytime we saw a market sell off, it was the buy the dip rally, right? Everybody just rush in and buy the dip. Well, I want to submit to you that there will be a time. There will be a time, and I'm not saying that this is the one, but there will be a time it doesn't come back. It will just continue to fall. And um, I think we may be having to fess up to the fact that we could be nearing a market top here and we need to be recognizing some of those clues. Let's continue on with some of these clues that could be showing themselves. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY is also now showing us that possible lower high. And unfortunately, here in the SPY, we have an additional problem that we have to recognize. If we take a look right here, we had a significant level of price resistance in that chart and we reacted negatively to that price resistance. And look how closely we are to potentially taking out that low of last week. And obviously we've broken this price support right through here. We will this morning anyway. So we have some issues here in that SPY chart. Now, if I draw this trend here on the SPY chart, notice that we have already given up that trend on the SPY chart. We have some issues here that we need to address and there is some uncomfortableness 
in seeing a chart like that. And I understand no one wants to have to look at or even face the possibility that this could be the end of this bull run. And I'm not saying that I have 100% confidence that this is the end. As a matter of fact, I have uh, nowhere near 100% confidence that this is the end. And I'm certainly not saying that I'm predicting this is the top. What I am saying is there's clues showing up here that could be evidence of that and we need to recognize it. If we can find some support, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe Jerome Powell rides in on his horse, white horse and, and hat with another big stimulus package or something that he's going to use to continue to inspire the market higher for a little while longer. But I think we're starting to run out of those things. His revolvers are running out of bullets. So watch that closely and carefully. Now, those two are the best two indexes that I can talk about, the diamonds and the SPY. If we take a look at the QQQ, the QQQ is in a confirmed downtrend. There's no mistaking it. We've made lower highs and lower lows, and we are now showing a full-on failure at the 50-day moving average here in the chart. Notice that our short-term averages are crossing down through that 50-day moving average. We don't have a bullish situation here in the NASDAQ. If the NASDAQ continues to sell, um, if we continue to get that pressure, and by the way, a very common market pattern is if we fail the 50-day moving average, then that average will seek the 200 day moving average. Now it usually doesn't do it in a straight line. Usually we'll hit a point, we rally back and we come on down. But just keep in mind that the NASDAQ is in a confirmed bearish trend at the moment and failing that 50 day moving average is not good. And the pressure here from the NASDAQ could literally pull the diamonds and spy lower. So watch that closely. And then we have IWM. The Russell has put in a protracted top here, um, a consolidating wide ranging choppy uh, pattern up here. But notice we had a failure here of the 50 day moving average. And yesterday we tested that within two ticks. Seriously, it was absolute, it was two ticks that we popped through that 50 day moving average and then it was rejected. That is a full on failure at the 50 day moving average and following through today is not a good sign. However, we do have a lot more of potential support under this because of that wide ranging area. So IWM has a little bit more of a shot if we push down in here, test the slow that we could bounce off of that. So not quite as critical as we are showing in the NASDAQ, but certainly um, a confirmed downtrend here that is giving us some clues um, that we should be thinking about the possibility that the market is topping. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now the VIX is something that I've been talking about here for a while. And I continue to mention the fact that if we hold a higher low, after a major sell-off like this, that's where the problem comes in. That's where the real selling can begin. And unfortunately, yesterday we kind of confirmed a higher low here in the market. We held that support. We held above the 50-day moving average. So this was the warning shot. This was the, um, hey, watch out. There's something, there's some problem going on here. There's an issue. Now, if we start to really sell off, this is where that big selling wave could come in. And we're gonna to wanna to watch that closely. I'm not suggesting that I have, I have a perfect read on this and that I just know that we're just gonna sink like crazy here. I, I don't want anybody to think that. What I want everyone to, to do is look at these charts critically and look at the possibility that this could exist. And all I'm trying to do is help you protect some of your capital so that you don't get caught up in this um, sell-off. Remember, all tops are a process. They're not, they're not smooth and just easy transitions. They're choppy, they're wild, they, they'll have whipsaws and, and um, 
pops and drops and all kinds of things that will occur in there that can chop up an account. So please be really, really thoughtful and careful that we, we are showing some concerns here in these markets and you need to be prepared um, for that possibility that this could be the time to um, to start protecting your capital or looking for those downside moves in the market. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now T2122 is the four week new high new low ratio. You guys know that I watch this all the time and T2122 does not tell us um, the directional movement of the market. It just tells us, it warns us when we're overbought, oversold. And we were pushing that yesterday up here, back up here toward that overbought condition, but we just couldn't push on through. And now we show um, some issues here this morning in the market with the futures pointing down, that we have that possibility that we could quickly and easily retest these lows down here in um, in that chart. So we could reach an oversold condition pretty easily here over the next couple of days. So watch that pretty carefully. If we take a look at our T2101, I got to tell you guys, this has been one of those things that I've talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. Um, I don't like the fact that we continue to push up since last March, we were pushing up with the absolute breadth indicator continuing to decline. Um, that's not the kind of thing we want to see. So we've got some issues here and problems. What, what um, could potentially occur here is we could actually see market breadth starting to expand on the selling wave. So watch for that possibility if that does occur. If we get more and more breadth coming in um, on the sell side, that's another warning that we need to be keeping an eye on. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar has got a couple things that we're going to want to pay attention to. Um, first off, we've got the petroleum status number that will be coming out. That, that has been real helpful to the market here recently, showing those declines um, in supplies. That's been bolstering those oil sector stocks and holding things up nicely in those. We'll want to watch that carefully today. That could be a critical number uh, for that oil sector. And we also want to pay attention to this. We have a 20 year bond. This morning bonds are pushing higher ahead of the FOMC release. And um, we'll want to keep an eye on that. Uh, today to see how that responds. Hopefully they've got it all programmed in. It won't be a big deal. But if we start seeing some pressure here on those bonds, that could certainly create some additional downside pressure, particularly on the NASDAQ. And then we've got the uh, release of last FOMC meeting. And we'll see if we can get some information out of that. I doubt we get a whole bunch of information. It seems like um, Fed speakers are, it's just a parade of Fed speakers all the time. These guys can't seem to keep their mouth shut here lately. They're just talk, 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 talk all the time. So I'm not sure we'll learn anything more, but um, we definitely want to pay attention to that. Let's take a look um, at our earnings calendar today. Now on our earnings, we, we didn't have a tremendous number of earnings today, um, but we do have some notables. We had about 31 companies on the list and we've already heard um, from Lowe's. Now Lowe's um, uh, had incredible sales. Um, looked really good, but you can see Lowe's is indicating lower here this morning um, after that earnings report. And then we also um, got numbers um, out of Target today, and Target just had blowout results. And we saw that yesterday in, in Home Depot and Walmart, but it really didn't produce a whole lot of um, warm and fuzzies for the market. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, some issues here still, even though we're getting some good earnings reports, not a lot of follow through on those. Um, other reports today, we're going to hear from ADI. ADI is pushing lower here this morning. It's been in a downtrend, pretty ugly. We've got JD. Now, there is some new news on some of these um, 
Chinese companies, uh, uh, President Biden um, has extended a grace period here uh, for compliance of some of these Chinese listed companies. Um, they are required to comply now by June 11th. It was May 27th, so he gave them a little mm -hmm. bit more time um, on that. But keep an eye on this. Um, a lot of these companies are in serious declines right now because of that potential of delisting um, if they don't comply. Um, then we have stocks like LB. Now, LB has been in a very, very strong. Some of these little retailers have just done extremely well. And um, you can see L Brands looking very, very good, very strong here. Watch for that report. Um, we're going to hear from TJX, another little retailer here. Looks like they're pulling back um, this morning after reporting, um, running into some highs up here. So watch that. Last but not least, um, SCVL. Um, is one I put on the list today. We'll want to keep an eye on that. And Cisco. Cisco will be reporting, I believe, after the bell today. So you'll want to keep an eye on Cisco. Could be one of those techs to uh, move the market um, around here a little bit. So watch that carefully. How about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And I hope you see the difference in these videos and, and other things that you may see other places where I avoid all of the hype and all of the drama of the market. And I I am seriously trying to help you um, visually see what's going on in the market and pull those clues out so you can protect your capital and do a better job of your trade in your trading. And if you find that to be helpful, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment. That helps the algorithms continue to show these videos to more folks. And I truly, truly appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that. Also, I need to make a huge shout out to those folks who are supporting the channel through the Buy Me A Coffee link. Truly appreciate that. Uh, means the world to me. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Let's take a look at a few stocks setting up and please keep in mind that these are not recommendations to buy or sell securities. These are um, merely my study of price action. Make sure you understand the risk and you understand um, how um, you might want to um, uh, trade those based on your rules and your risk tolerance. Let's take a look at a couple that um, you might want to watch. Take a look at TBT. TBT is in a bullish pattern right in here. This morning, we early morning, we had um, this spiking up. It's pulling back at the moment, but keep an eye on TBT. Perhaps this is a top, we don't know, but um, this is the short of the 20-year treasury. We're going to want to watch that today, and particularly with the 20-year bond auction today, keep a close eye on that chart. That could be kind of an interesting chart. Um, been watching that for a potential upside move. Keep a close eye on it. Another chart that you might want to take a look at, take a look at PSQ. Now, PSQ is an inverse to the NASDAQ, and it is not a leveraged ETF. Um, oftentimes what you see folks wanting to trade is just the huge leverage ETFs. And remember, those are great for trading and all of that, but we should recognize the fact that we have a little bit of a problem starting to show up here in PSQ. And notice it's trying to break a downtrend. And this is a pattern in here that we call the rounded bottom breakout that is a very, very bullish pattern. And unfortunately, that bullish pattern is showing up as being something bearish for the NASDAQ. So watch that closely. That may be some place where you can pick up a hedge in the market. Um, remember, if the, if the NASDAQ continues to fall, this will continue to rally to the upside um, in an equal measure to the NASDAQ. This is not leveraged like some of the others out there. So something to pay attention to. One other that you may want to keep an eye on is RWM. RWM is also, this is um, the Russell um, inverse ETF. 
and you can see this is also in that rounded bottom breakout pattern breaking back above its 50 target up here would be around the 200 day moving average eventually um, it's holding in here this is not the kind of patterns that we need to see in a bullish market so here's some ideas to maybe hedge your accounts um, with uh, trades like that other places that you might want to look is um, i've got to continue to um, to mention stocks like silver let's take a look i want to go to this chart here now silver is pulling back this morning and that's not a big surprise it's been in quite a rally here recently but silver selling off and by the way we can get commodity sell-offs like this if the market continues to sell oftentimes we'll see these sell off because people are protecting capital they're they're using these to pull some capital out of the market so watch that carefully silver um, um, is one of those that i would want to be paying attention to in a very bearish market if it starts to become bearish another would be gold um, keep an eye on GLD now GLD is pulling back today again not a big surprise it's been rallying hard and we ran into some price resistance but we should be watching some of these for those potential upside moves other places that I think that you could look look at uh, some of the other metals um, Alcoa has been holding up pretty well it is showing some bearishness this morning but I think that's just a factor of what's going on in the overall market here keep an eye on that if we happen to get something done in that um, infrastructure bill you might want to be taking a close look at some of these stocks in steel now you can see MT pulling back pretty hard today STLD also in a pullback um, and that's a factor of everything selling this morning so kind of keep that in mind these could pop or bounce back up other places that you might want to look are in some of those areas um, that are consumer needed products, consumer staples. Take a look at XLP. XLP has been holding up, and although it is pulling back this morning, I don't think there's any major problem here in this chart, but watch that carefully. Staples are something we're gonna need even if the market decides to really top and sell off. We're gonna need those staples. Keep an eye on it. They'll draw down, they'll draw down, but um, they will bounce back usually uh, pretty strongly. Another place that you might wanna look at some of the food related areas, um, Kroger. Um, you probably saw news the other day that Warren Buffett is kind of doubling down on his bet in Kroger. We're going to need food if the market sells off, obviously. So keep a close eye on stocks like that. So there's a few for you to look at. I, I wish I could tell you that there is a great number of stocks. There's places to make money um, in the market right now, but we're going to have to be very, very careful. Remember, financials continue to hold up pretty well. If we can continue to support those financials, the market could still move higher. So watch that closely in those financials. And we're going to have to pay attention to energy today. Um, XLE, you can see we've kind Kind of topped up here um, showing some resistance in that and pushing back today um, that um, oil status number or petroleum status number will be very important to this today so keep a close eye protect yourselves guys protect yourselves be careful protect that capital um, everyone i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great profits in your trading and i'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Have a great day. Everybody.